Hello, this is Kenneth Wong, Contributing Editor for Desktop Engineering Magazine. If you're an Autodesk Inventor user, I should give you fair warning. Curves ahead. You have no doubt seen the kind of swooping, rolling, lofty, curved shapes that are becoming quite common in consumer products. Generally speaking, 3D mechanical design packages are less than ideal for creating that kind of shapes. To get them, most people resort to specialized software like Rhino. But if you are an Autodesk Inventor user and would prefer to work mostly in Inventor, you could do that with Autodesk Alias Design 2011. Let me give you a quick peek. What I've done here is install the 30-day trial version of Alias Design. Since I already have Inventor 2011 installed on my machine, this adds an Alias plugin called Alias Design for Autodesk Inventor. Now, here's a simple Inventor part. A simple extrusion of a 2D profile with a few lines and arcs. Now I'm going to go into Alias tab to get access to its editing menu. Once I'm there, I can now start pushing and pulling on vertices along my edges and lines to reshape the geometry in a way that's not usually possible or easy to do in Inventor or any other mechanical design modeling programs for that matter. So it's one thing to add a circular feature on one side then try to create a matching feature on the opposite side. You can do that and fairly easily. But you cannot easily do that kind of symmetry on complex surfaces and shapes. To do that you can use alias geometric symmetry feature. Think of it as a mirror command that remains active throughout your modeling session. So whatever you do on one side get reflected on the other side depending on the reflection plane that you have chosen for this purpose. Alias Design 2011 gives you G2 continuity in your curves. What that means is you get a superior kind of geometry. The kind of geometry that remains consistent in its flows and rolls. You can check that if you like with the zebra stripe verification here. Now once I'm done, I can go right back into Inventor Modeling Mode so I can work and apply typical mechanical part features like rounded edges and blended corners. Now a word about Inventor 2011, the new version. It's still a parametric modeler, of course, but you'll find that you can adjust many of the parametric features like extrusions, blends and others similar to how you might model in a history-free counterpart like Inventor Fusion. By the way, the visual display in Inventor 2011 is quite impressive too. Look at this. This is not a rendering, I tell you. It's a working model. I just turn on the ground reflection, shadows and environment. Some of them come preloaded, so you could show your model in, say, an old warehouse or a lab. Now take a look at this. If I zoom in, I can actually see the environment. This happens to be an old warehouse reflected on the surface of my model. In fact, if I rotate it at an angle, as you can see, there is a roof of the warehouse. I'm now going to switch to an open road environment to present my model against a blue sky. Bear in mind, however, the more complex your display setting is, the more taxing it'll be on your system. So it could start to slow down your system if you turn on everything. It's best to strike a balance, I think, between your workload and your visual preferences. This is the first in our series about Autodesk 2011 product line, so look for more. Till next time, this is Kenneth Wong for Desktop Engineering Magazine with a newfound appetite for curvilinear design.